This morning, for the first time in humanity's long and storied history, the sun did not rise. It's a Vex simulation that has plunged the city into an endless night. Osiris and I could only think of one we might turn to. Mithrax. He claims to be among the last sacred splicers. Those with the power to commune with machines. Find him, Guardian. Before the Vex do. We must splice an entrance to the Vex network. I can guide you, but I cannot follow. Once inside, you must find your own way. So that's Season of the Splicer, so let's see what they got here. An Endless Night. The Vex have plunged the last city into an endless night, threatening the safety once found beneath the watchful presence of the Traveler. It is here, bathed in the perpetual moonlight, that Ikora reveals the identity of an unlikely ally that may hold the keys to triumphing over this attack. I don't know what Mithrax <laughs> has to do with this, but we'll find out, I guess. Allies Beyond Light. Mithrax, Kell of House Light leads a small group of Elixni who wish to be closer to the Traveler. As a sacred splicer, he poses the knowledge needed to combat the Vex technology that ensnares the last city. There is a bond of light shared here. Will it be enough? I don't know, man. Mithrax is pretty cool. Oh, that's cool. It's got, like, the Europa armor design. That's really cool. Let's see. What else? Obviously, Lord of Wolves. That's cool. That's like the Europa helmet design, though. That's I really like that touch. <clears throat> Helmupgrade.exe. A new chamber overlooking the loading bay has been completed. It is here that the Vanguard will harness new splice attack and plan their response to the Vex incursion. So here it looks like it's, you know, it's just showing you that this little room down here is going to be utilized. And then here's some... People in their armor with the new weapons and stuff. Way of the Splicer. Six player match made activity override. Fire teams of six will use Splicer tech to hack the Vex network. Uncover their secrets, steal their code, and use their power against them. Alright. I mean, this looks pretty cool. I like the whole, like, not in the real world. So right there we see that there's an overload minotaur. So there's going to be champions. I'm a fan of that. I think champions are good design. Let's see. Weekly Pinnacle Mission, Expunge. Each week, Guardians will uncover new vulnerabilities within the Vex network and use splicer keys to infiltrate the collap and collapse it from within. Alright. So I wonder if this is going to be like Presage any bit. That's kind of what the vibe I had with Presage. Because they kind of wanted us to do it weekly. I don't know. As long as this is interesting and it like changes, I think it'll be fine. Because that was my problem with Presage. Okay, so we're going to get some stuff on the lunar surface. I like that. I hope they use, like, all the destinations. All right, and now Vault of Glass. Oh, that's so beautiful. <sighs> Free for all players, Vault of Glass. The Time Lost Raid returns, stored away deep in the Vault of Glass on Venus's Atheon, Time Conflux. No one knows what the vex this Vex is, and Guardians must access the Vault, navigate the fractures in space and time, and terminate Atheon before it can become an unstoppable threat. That'll be cool. 
Maybe we'll see that portal that connects the Whisper mission do something this time. Bungie Rewards tells of the daring descent into the fabled vault just seem a little grander when everyone's wearing matching rings, jackets, and sitting in front of art that immortalizes your fire team's triumph. So there's the raid jacket. It's just kind of like a regular jacket, I guess. I don't know what you call that. The other red jackets, the bomber styles, I'm a fan of. I mean, this looks all right. I was actually kind of expecting it to be a white one because of chatter white. That's kind of what I was anticipating, to be honest. I know white clothing is like, you know, kind of hell to deal with because, you know, it gets dirty very easily. But that's what I was expecting. And then we get to see this giant ass Super Bowl ring. I mean, that thing looks massive. You can knock someone out with that. That's going to be the new exotic melee weapon. There's the badge or whatever, the seal. That looks all nice. Armor synthesis. Here's the really tone deaf thing. Someone pointed out that like <laughs> you, they change more armor than we'll be able to in the game. <laughs> for free, at least for playing the game without paying. Grow your collection among the stars and forge your look in the last city. Every journey and every guardian is unique. Your armor should be too. Now this is kind of cool that they didn't really tell us, but now they are. With the help of Ada-1, Guardians will recover Braid Tech secrets from Europa that allow the building of a device known as a loom. Once operational, Ada-1 will safeguard the loom within the tower, granting Guardians the ability to create a Synthweave. Synthweave unlocks the power to turn almost any piece of armor into a universal ornament. So this is the key part that I like about this. Guardians will recover Braid Tech secrets from Europa that allow the building of a device known as the loom. So it looks like this is actually going to be integrated into the story somehow. Yeah, this is nice art. Like, this looks so good. Oh, I wonder if she's... Yeah, she's probably not going to have her glow like we earned back in Black Armory. That'll be kind of disappointing if that's the case. I would really appreciate that touch if you did do it previously. Here's a picture of the loom. Man, that's crazy. Looks pretty cool. And this is... What I'm guessing that these different colors are is it's like Warlock, Titan, Hunter... And then this is like the one you buy from Eververse because they said that that one's going to be like universal. Armaments. Oh, oh, one, one, oh, one, one, one. Right there. Over 30 new and reprised legendary weapons to crash the Vex network with. Find the perfect weapon and the perfect role and bring an end to this endless night. These look pretty cool. The one complaint I've had about the design is these little things that come off, but you'll probably never see those. They look pretty good. The colors, you know, they're like synthwave sort of thing. Is this a grenade launcher? That's kind of what that looks like. That's either a shotgun or a grenade launcher, I think. But it looks like a grenade launcher because of this foregrip. This looks like an SMG. This looks like a pulse rifle. And then a sidearm, obviously. Then let's look at the new armor exotic. Star Eater Scales allows hunters to feast upon orbs of power, charging their super more quickly and making it more potent. Yeah, that's really cool. It'll be a shame if they nerf Geomags and then they give Hunters this. That's all I can say. Because they've already said that they're going to deal with it. The Path of Burning Steps. Titan armor that converts solar elemental element eliminations into increased weapon damage and makes them more difficult to lock down with stasis. So first off, I don't think this is the season they should have added this. Because they've already said that in Season 15 more enemies are going to utilize stasis. So, like, right now, this is only going to serve as, like, a PvP sort of exotic, which is kind of sh a shame because, like, technically there are enemies that use stasis. They're in, like, the glass way. I feel like they should have held off and released these later. But, I mean, they're releasing them now. The, the solar damage thing, I mean, that sounds interesting, but I don't know. Again, it's, like, something that, like, really, it's really restrictive. And I imagine makes them more difficult to lock down with stasis. I imagine what that means is like you're they're gonna get like less stacks of slow. That's my that's my guess. Or they just aren't frozen for the entire duration or something. But they already now there's two ways that this could work. It could mean that you have to get a solar elimination to proc the lockdown with stasis thing or these are two separate independent perks that are just like 
the solar elimination is how you get weapon damage, and then you're just always harder to lock down with stasis. Because if it's if it's the previous one where it's you have to get a solar elimination and then this thing procs the stasis resistance, this is not gonna be that good. Like it's like oh let me get a solar kill so you don't freeze me. It's like what okay. And then moving on to the Warlock one. I'm pretty excited about this one. Boots of the Assembler. Condenses a Warlock's rift healing or empowering energy into projectiles that seek out their allies to bless them with noble benefits. So they say noble benefits. It makes me wonder if it's going to like shoot out like noble rounds. I don't know how it's going to work. It, I mean, I don't, I don't know. There's multiple ways they could do this. I'm thinking it could like either shoot out noble rounds from like Lumina or it's going to do like the... Like a version of the arc thing from the um, Chaos Reach passive. I don't know. We'll see. That sounds interesting though. I'm glad Warlock's finally got something that affects the Warlock Rift. As long as the animation isn't the same duration, I feel like these will make it a, a lot better in PvP. There's the Seasonal Armor. That looks pretty good. I wonder if that's the Seasonal Armor or the Seasonal Ornaments. I kind of hope it's only the Armor. I feel like the Ornaments should have more... Um, like glowing bits like that. We'll see though. Gear, XP rewards. Get the season pass and instantly unlock the new exotic stasis sidearm. Also get XP boosts that speed up the seasonal ranks and reward track unlocks. Exotic stasis sidearm. As a token of friendship, Mithrax bestows guardians with Christ Thesia, 77k, a stasis powered sidearm with liquid cooling tech. Yeah, that's the cool one where it's like, I, I'm guessing it's like after a kill you do a special reload and then you can freeze something with one shot that's my guess from that trailer i can go re-examine it splicer gauntlet sacred splicer tech that can be charged with ether and used to hack the vex network access conflicts chest and unlock splicer upgrades i mean this looks exactly like the hammer that i think that's all it's going to be and i think that's the whole the whole new like fallen room that's part of the helm is like it's just going to be for upgrading that thing like you come up to the servitor you put your hand in it or something and then you upgrade it because like i feel like this thing in the helm is solely still going to be dedicated to the hammer so i don't know we'll see it's kind of getting a little redundant if you ask me and then universal ornaments okay so these are the ornaments unlock the new season of the spicer universal ornaments and augment the look of any piece of armor in your collections I mean, that looks okay. Not a fan of the Warlock one. The helmet looks kind of strange. I mean, I don't know. We'll, we'll wait until it's in-game. But then we got the uh, Season Pass. You know, you get the exotic. And then obviously the little box right here. Just cool emotes and stuff. Transmat effect. Let's see if there's... A okay, so there's an LMG in the Season Pass. And what's that? A shotgun? Yeah, I think that's a shotgun. That's either the shotgun or that thing that I was saying that looks like a grenade launcher. Either or, one of them. They could be a shotgun, either of them. <clears throat> and then there's the ornament for the exotic sidearm. Alright, so that looks cool. So here is the difference between Season Pass owners and Free for Everyone. Seasonal reward track, they get the free reward, obviously. Let's see, the only thing you don't get, really. I actually really appreciate this. They're doing a the six-player matchmaking thing, the override. They're doing a free trial. I really appreciate that. Free trial active activity available to everyone for one week after logging in during Season of the Splicer. Okay. I appreciate that. I feel like they should do more, more free trial type stuff. The game is marketed as a free-to-play game. Let, let's be honest, people. <clears throat> see, really, you really don't get much difference from like these two things better be really good because like that's right here it's showing you like this is what you're paying for and the season pass obviously but it's like you're really not paying for much huh whatever i mean that's the game and then here's the calendar so it looks like we're going to be unlocking the overrides in the different planets so it's going to be kind of like the Battlegrounds, I guess. That that It looks exactly like the Battlegrounds, honestly. As far as, like, 
how it's going to progress through the season. New stasis aspects, intro mission armor synthesis, and the endless night begins, and then override Europa. So we start out Europa, then we go to the moon, then we go to the Tangled Shore, and then we go to... I guess that's when we're done. Okay, so it's Europa, Tangled Shore, and the moon. That's pretty cool. I would have liked to see more. I mean, this looks pretty good. The trailer looks pretty good. Bungie always does good on the trailers. I'll give them that. So, the best things I'm excited for for a season of the Slicer. The things I think are going to be the best. Six-player activity. Match-made activity, I should add. Vault of Glass, obviously. That's free to play, though, technically. So, I'm not going to actually count that one, T to be truthful. I think the storytelling is going to be really good. Ikora is actually getting some voice lines and stuff. So, I'm really excited for that. That'll be good to see more characters being fleshed out. Um, the cons. I think the hammer charging mechanic is getting kind of old. The lure was kind of terrible, actually. Like, the lure was really bad. Like, the whole randomization of it and then also having to charge it and stuff like that. But the hammer... I, man, I don't know if it's going to be crazy expensive to do tier 3 umbrals with the like it was with the hammer, it's going to be brutal, man. I don't think people are going to engage with that. I, I sure as hell didn't engage with the tier three umbrals. I unlocked them all, maybe did one or two here for the challenges, but like, I just couldn't be bothered. Like the armor is not going to be good enough stats. Like I could just do raids to get, to try to get good stat armor. Stats aren't that meaningful. So it's like, even if I do get good stats or don't get good stats, it's like, eh, it's like not even that crazy good of a benefit it's like a marginal boost um yeah i mean those are my cons i'm hoping the seasonal artifact is really cool like the mods we get i hope they calm down with the costs of like doing special weapon anti-champion mods and stuff like they're they're pretty ridiculous bungie i hope we have good anti-champion weapons too like I feel like we're going to get sidearms. I feel like we're going to get fusions. And I feel like those two things are kind of confirmed. Because, like, sidearms, there's an exotic sidearm and there's a new legendary sidearm. And then also fusions, we know that they're bringing back Reservoir Burst on some sort of fusion. It's probably a linear fusion now that I think about it because they did this big linear fusion buff. And that would be pretty interesting to see. Um, yeah, I'm excited for a season of the Splicer. It's coming out soon. Now that I'm done with Destiny, I would like to shill my board game. It's called Cindershire. It's a dungeon-crawling competitive game. Um, if you want to check it out, you can go to cindershire.com, or you can check out the Kickstarter, which is live. It's up for 60 days. Got 58 more to do, and I could really support your backing. You can go to Kickstarter and search Cindershire, or go to cindershire.com. Both links will be in the description below. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.